His Majesty King Abdullah II Ibn al Hussein and Professor Klaus Schwab. Your Majesty, King Abdullah II of the Hashemid Kingdom of Jordan, Your Majesty, Queen Rania Al Abdullah, Your Royal Highness, Crown Prince Hussein Al Abdullah, Your Excellency, President Abbas, Royal Highnesses, esteemed members of governments, Dear partners, members, and constituents, and friends of the World Economic Forum, a cordial welcome. It is a great privilege for me, personally and for the World Economic Forum, to be back here at the Dead Sea in Jordan. We are convening here 10 years after His Majesty King Abdullah II brought us to Jordan in 2003 for an extraordinary annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. And it is now the seventh time that we convene and come together again here at the Dead Sea. I am proud to say that this long-standing partnership with Jordan under the direct auspices of His Majesty reflects the unique position of your country in the region and internationally. It is not only connected to the long-standing role of Jordan as a key diplomatic, economic, and social hub, but also, and I would say crucially, it is linked to the continuous evolution of Jordan and its forward-looking vision. So as, there is one specific attribute to our host country, of our host country, which I would like to feature and mention here, namely its role as a safe haven for people escaping strife and insecurity in their home countries. The current extremely tragic situation in Syria has direct impact on this country, and I would like to commend our Jordanian friends for their hospitality towards the Syrian people in need. The World Economic Forum is committed to supporting efforts to urgently address the Syrian humanitarian emergency, a priority which will be key also to many of our discussions during the forthcoming two days. Ladies and gentlemen, it is at a crucial time again that we come here to the region, and we are a true multi-stakeholder community convened under the theme advancing conditions for growth and resilience, which reflects both the immense opportunity as well as the high stakes of the transformations underway in the Arab world. I would like to mention just three axes which shall guide our work here and which will be very important for the successful outcome of our meeting. First, it is our support for all efforts to transform this region into a real beacon of hope and to realize the enormous potential of this region. It is our belief that successful reforms will depend also to a large extent on the great cooperation of the business community with the political community on public-private partnerships. And therefore, I am pleased to see so many top business leaders of the region and beyond here in the room joined by political leaders 
from almost all the countries in the region. Second, the single greatest challenge to the Middle East and North Africa is, as we all know, job creation. To address this urgent imperative, the World Economic Forum is launching an initiative titled A New Vision for Arab Employment. By bringing together young leaders with ministers of the region, by bringing together politicians and business leaders, we are aiming to create a platform for all stakeholders which should foster common action to the resolve this urgent issue. And finally, we have to integrate youth. I could not overstate the importance of creating an enabling environment for youth to succeed and to fulfill their aspirations. In the Arab world, as we all know, there are 100 million young people between 15 and 29 years old, representing 30% of the region's total population. In some countries, youth are a demographic majority, thus holding the key to both the present and future economic destiny of third nations. I'm glad that the Forum is able to contribute to empowering youth, and I should add, to foster gender equity of this region with its communities of young global leaders and global shapers whose presence and attendance I particularly salute. Both communities are fully integrated into this program and are great agents for positive change. There are many other concrete initiatives which are integrated into this program and which require your active engagement and support. But all those initiatives have one objective in mind, to create strong, sustained and inclusive growth in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to be in Jordan at this important moment and it is now my pleasure to give the floor to His Majesty King Abdullah II of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan to officially open the 2013 World Economic Forum on the Middle East and North Africa. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Professor Schwab, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests. On behalf of Jordan, a warm welcome to you all. This is a special day, a great day for the Jordanian family, the 67th anniversary of Jordan's independence. So if you'll allow me a special message on this important occasion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. نجتمع اليوم والأردن يحتفل بأغلى المناسبات الوطنية وهي مناسبة stands for the sacrifices made by our forefathers to liberate the national will and to build a better future. Our independence embodies sacrifice, belonging, and the sense of responsibility to build our homeland and to preserve its security, stability, and achievements. I congratulate you all on this occasion and on behalf of the generous Jordanian people, I welcome you all to Jordan. Today we celebrate our beloved country, we honor our citizens past and present, and we look to 
the future. And I'm delighted that you are here to join us. This forum recognizes the partnership of all our countries, from the Atlantic to the Indian Ocean. Our countries stretch in one sweep like a strong spine across the world. And as a spine is central to the human being, so our region is central to this globe. Our strength and stability in times of threat keep the world more secure. Our resilience and progress in times of change keep the world moving forward. And the choices that we make carry a message to the world about the future we share. My friends, the Arab Spring and its call for human dignity has become the voice of our century. And the hard work of millions of our people is proving that inclusive, peaceful change is a better path than despair and violence. This is a reason to stand proud. But we cannot stand still. Reform, democracy, and peace are always work in progress. And progress demands we keep moving forward. We also cannot stand alone. Our countries have our own unique histories and paths. But a stable, secure future for us all will take our full capabilities pulling together. We are emerging from an era of historic economic challenge. A global downturn, regional dislocations, slow recovery in major world economies. The job ahead is not simply to rebound. We must spur new growth. Our region's single greatest economic crisis, youth unemployment, pleads for action, double action, immediate relief to meet urgent needs, and inclusive high-growth strategies that can produce the millions more jobs we must have soon. These are serious challenges, but I believe there is a huge potential in the MENA region, not only to solve our problems, but to move strongly ahead. Investors who look are finding real opportunities to enter markets, grow businesses, and create jobs. The force behind regional opportunity is the expansion of stakeholding, reform that empowers people to build the future they want to see, and frees our countries to be their creative, productive best. This is the path that Jordan is taking, consensus-driven and law-based, creative, inclusive, sustainable change that keeps people secure and improves lives. The Arab Spring helped us intensify this effort on multiple fronts. And as we celebrate Jordan's 67th Independence Day, our new journey is well underway. On the political side, we're laying the foundations of effective party-based parliamentary government, secured by our Constitution, the backbone of our country's rights and laws. This January parliamentary elections brought one of the highest voter turnouts in Jordan's history. Record number of candidates vied for seats. 60% of the new parliament are first-time MPs. There has been a consultative process to choose the prime minister, and a first pilot parliamentary government is underway. Economic reform is also ongoing. To respond to economic challenges, including an unforeseeable energy crisis, the government developed a national reform program that has earned us international support. It will make our economy emerge stronger from this latest test. Now, we seek inclusive growth, the key to job creation now and in the future. And Jordan recognizes the central role of the private sector. For more than 10 years, we have worked to remove barriers to enterprise and to integrate into the global and regional economies. Our free trade agreements 
link us to more than 1 billion consumers. We have invested in infrastructure, public services, and Jordan's greatest assets are people. ICT companies, among others, have turned to our young, tech-savvy workforce, helping Jordanian ICT become a leading sector at home and a leader in the region. For our relatively small country, with limited natural resources, openness is a strategic choice. But the entire MENA region profits from working together to expand regional markets, better manage the environment, and encourage innovation and enterprise. This cooperation is the backbone of sustainable, inclusive growth. My friends, cooperation is also essential for security and peace. For some time, regional economies have survived and even grown despite nearby crises. But we will never be able to put the full resources of our lands into better lives for our people until regional crises are met. In Syria, a political solution is urgently needed to stop that country's dangerous fragmentation and to resolve the dire refugee crisis. Our Jordanian population is now hosting 10% of its size in Syrian refugees, and this may double by year end. Jordanians are generously sharing scarce water and other resources. For host countries like us in Lebanon, for displaced and vulnerable Syrians, both inside and outside their country, increased humanitarian assistance from the global community is vital. But what ultimately is needed is an immediate end to the violence so all the Syrian people can rebuild their country. We must also work together to address the core crisis in our region, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Extremism everywhere has grown fat off this crisis. It is time to stop feeding its growth. The Arab Peace Initiative points the way forward. Now we need to help the parties get on the path. Settlement building and threats to the holy city and its sacred sites must stop. Good faith talks must get going. We can and must keep this issue at the top of the international agenda. Professor Schwab, allow me to thank you for your special friendship with Jordan and our entire region. Your support has been key since the first of these forums here at the Dead Sea, as you mentioned, exactly 10 years ago. My friends, for 10 years, we have met together, we have built futures together, we have welcomed change together, and our partnership continues. And I'm especially proud of the Jordanian youth who have joined these forums over these years, young men and women who have brought the voice of a new generation to the dialogue. They and their peers across the region, working hard for a better world, are the backbone of our future. Let us help them be strong. Here in this forum and in the days ahead, we will be welcoming new ideas, new partnerships, new achievements for prosperity, peace, justice, inclusion. Jordan stands ready to work with you every step of the way. Thank you and a wonderful Jordanian Independence Day to all of you.
Ladies and gentlemen, friends, I'm delighted that we are joined here today by a very special guest and friend of the World Economic Forum, His Excellency President Mahmoud Abbas. Mr. President, last time we met was, always, was almost exactly a year ago at our Istanbul summit. Sir, you delivered greatly inspiring and forward-looking remarks on Palestine and the need for peace in the opening session together with Prime Minister Erdogan. Since then, the urgency of advancing towards peace has become even more acute given the pace of change in the region and the fundamental geopolitical shift. I promised you, Mr. President, in Istanbul last June, that the Forum would build on its long-standing commitment to Palestinian-Israeli relations and reconciliation and work with its own, the Forum's multi-stakeholder community to help renew the conditions and the support for peace. I'm glad, Mr. President, that we will be able to put forward the results of our work during the last 12 months tomorrow afternoon during a special plenary session with you, Mr. President, and with Secretary Kerry and President Perez. Mr. President, it's a pleasure to have you with us at this important time, crucial time for the region and for Palestine, and I'm now delighted to give you the floor and to invite you to join me here to give the special address. <coughs> of God the merciful, the compassionate. Your Majesty, King Abdullah the Second, Your Excellency Klaus Schwab, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First, I wish to deeply congratulate Jordan and its king and government and people on the occasion of the Day of Independence. And I wish for this dear uh, country contained continued stability and progress and success our dear brothers in Jordan. This forum is held today amid extremely critical and grave circumstances that the world and our region in particular face and which lead to political, economic, and social transformations that are accelerating intertwined and ambiguous, and which affect our societies and have an impact on security, stability, and on the plans for sustainable economic development and its dynamics. Here, I wish to commend the pioneering and leading role that is played by the World Economic Forum, which gathers this big and distinguished elite of personalities uh, uh, who are active in the fields of uh, politics, finance, business, economics, and academia in one roof every year to discuss the efficient means to move forward with plans uh, for uh, 
economic and social development and for creating an enabling environment for the exchange of expertise and opinion. I seize the opportunity of this forum in Jordan to express to my brother, His Majesty, King Abdullah II, my gratitude and deep appreciation for his generous invitation and for hosting this conference in the dear and proud Jordan. This reflects what the efforts you are exerting, Your Majesty, and the efforts to achieve just and comprehensive peace and security in the region. Everybody attests to your sincere efforts and your pursuits in this regard. We appreciate your noble positions and supporting positions to your people in Palestine to enhance their steadfastness in their country. Ladies and gentlemen, Palestine has its uh, religious and spiritual status and the distinguished geographic position. It is the cradle of the three divine religions, the land of peace, to which hundreds of millions of people look. Ladies and gentlemen, despite Israeli obstacles by not enabling us to fully utilize our land and natural resources, However, Palestine enjoys promising opportunities and wide prospects in tourism and uh, in agricultural and industrial investments and in telecommunications and information technology, as well as uh, the production and distribution of electric power through investing in energy, including renewable energy and also in oil and gas and potash and other promising investment fields. Despite all the obstacles imposed by occupation, Palestinian and Arab investors, together with the Palestine Investment Fund, and the chairman of the fund, Dr. Mohammed Mustafa, who is with us here today, have developed several uh, tourism and housing enterprises in Ramallah and Jenin and the major industrial areas in Jericho and Bethlehem. And they have invested in telecommunications, energy, and agricultural production. We have issued laws that protect investment and promote the development of the infrastructure we have an active banking sector under the oversight of the Palestinian Monetary Authority. In addition to the active Palestine Stock Exchange and the Central Bureau of Statistics, which provides statistical information in accordance with the best international standards. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to visit Palestine and to see the conditions for yourself and to explore uh, the available and possible investment opportunities. You can have partnerships and joint ventures with Palestinian investors and business persons. Such investment activities enhance the steadfastness of our people and support the achievement of peace and stability in the region and also benefits investors. Ladies and gentlemen, in few days, the occupation of the West Bank and East Jerusalem and Gaza Strip will complete 46 years. And after 20 years of negotiations, the government of Israel continues to maneuver, procrastinate, and avoid the prerogatives of peace. Nevertheless, we continue to say that we want 
the just and comprehensive peace. And we want to achieve the two-state solution, the two states that would live side by side in peace in accordance uh, with the uh, international legitimacy resolutions, the roadmap, and the Arab Peace Initiative. Everybody knows that we have met our obligations in accordance with the signed agreements. And we have clarified our positions and intentions. And we have given all what is required from us. We are uh, witnessing these days concrete action and efforts exerted to resume the peace process and which come following the visit of President Barack Obama through the efforts of Secretary John Kerry. And this gives us hope. We wait, to, and with us, the whole region and the whole world wait for the efforts that are currently exerted and that are supported by regional and all regional and international parties shall lead to a solution that would end Israeli occupation of 1967 and would guarantee to our people their legitimate right in an independent and sovereign state over their land with East Jerusalem as its capital. On this occasion, we reiterate that the status of an observer state at the United Nations for Palestine is not an alternative to negotiations, but it is a right of the rights of the Palestinian people, and it is a Palestinian pursuit to assert and confirm the uh, framework of reference of the peace process which we seek to achieve uh, with determination. Ladies and gentlemen, we seek with determination to put an end to the Palestinian division and to hold presidential and legislative elections as soon as possible. And we call upon parties to respond to the exerted efforts, and we are moving forward in the right direction. The issue of reconciliation requires only two points that had been agreed in Doha and Egypt. Forming a transitional government from independent figures and holding the elections. And uh, when uh, uh, there is an agreement over the elections, we will move forward directly for reconciliation. Uh, the question is whether uh, we and they are willing uh, to have elections. We, this is a question we don't have an answer to. Ladies and gentlemen, and I from here address our neighbors, the Israelis, that ending the occupation of our land and leasing, releasing our prisoners and uh, the eviction of uh, settlers and uh, settlement activity and dismantling the apartheid wall is what makes peace and guarantees uh, security for you and for us. And the opportunity is still there for making this peace. Come, let us make this peace a reality achieved on the ground so that our uh, current and future generations would reap its benefit and its fruit and would live in it. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for the warm reception and the hospitality and for listening. And I deeply appreciate all the efforts exerted to organize this renowned forum, which I hope uh, will achieve all its uh, desired outcomes and I commend the, uh, Jordan, the, uh, 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 the king, and the government, and the people, and their warm reception. And we highly appreciate the efforts of His Majesty for making this important economic forum a success. And peace be upon you.
Please remain seated. I want to thank President Abbas for his speech. We will have President Abbas um, coming back to address us tomorrow related to the initiative which I mentioned in my opening remarks. We will proceed with the first uh, opening panel session in just a moment.